Hi, how are you? I'm Houston, back with another video. It's Call of Duty News Day, and my cat just jumped up into his tree. Look how cute he is. We've got 14, 15 days until season two finally releases after that delay, and we just got some nice new info on the new Resurgence map, Ashika Island. So even though I mostly just play multiplayer on this channel and I've sort of been avoiding Warzone like the plague until those quality of life changes come and then I can finally play some solos or I'll want to play some solos is probably a better way of looking at it. I figured I would take a look at the new map and, you know, give my expert opinion on it because everybody asked for it. So yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Do I have any other cool calling cards? I'm just trying to get more anime calling cards. Oh my god. Maybe I should like try and just do all these challenges. Because I don't really feel like doing the weapon mastery challenge. Because there's nothing that you really get from it. So maybe I can just like run through all these and try and get as many as possible. Oh, this is the one I want. Right here. What do I need to do? Frag grenades. I'm putting frags on all my classes. This one right here is the one that I was rocking before that glitch got patched where you could go into the CDL playlist and like, you know, just pick whatever calling card and emblem you wanted. But yeah, it'd be kind of fun to just like start at the top and just try and complete all these. So I already have that one done. I already have that one done. Three more in this one. I do find it funny how like the hold that anime calling cards and bundles and all that have on this community. I mean, I'm a weeb myself. I love anime. It's just funny that like, even if people don't really like anime, like the colorfulness and like, oh, the anime girls, it's like people buy them anyway. We are never going to escape from the grasp of the anime girl. Okay, so we need frag grenade kills. Uh, we'll just run with this M4 because why not? And we are going to play some free for all wherever it is. Is that in quick play? So the new resurgence map, Ashika Island. Ah, she, ka. You could see in that teaser that they posted with the marble rolling through the sand, there was katakana at the end. And katakana is one of the two character alphabets in Japanese. There's hiragana and katakana. And katakana is used a lot of the time for like English words. You see it a lot, especially in menus of video games. Like if you change the language to Japanese, a lot of the menu names, so it's like continue, new game, whatever. All that stuff will pretty much always be in katakana and it looks more angular the characters do rather than uh more cursive like and that's hiragana so you can see the characters a a she shi which is a sideways smiley face that cod players have been putting in their names since like modern warfare 2 cod 4 and it's funny because it's always just meant she like shi and then the last character is Ka, K-A, so Ashika. So this island looks like it's actually pretty big and it's made by the same people that made Fortune's Keep. Their name is High Noon Studios. And I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Like I haven't played a ton of Warzone and honestly, I sort of fell off the whole Warzone train after Fortune's Keep came out. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see like how it plays with the Modern Warfare 2 engine because I don't, uh, wow. Uh, it's got that dark, gloomy, cloudy feel to it, which I much prefer over anything that has a sun that can blind me every time I turn around a corner. A big similarity that the map has to Fortune's Keep is that it has that underground area. And I'm not really sure how to feel about that because it played kind of weird in Fortune's Keep. I feel like it's just another opportunity for a lot of people to like play like goblins. And I think we need to just move further and further away from that and incentivize like more head to head combat rather than this overly tactical. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize how difficult it would be for me to play free for all and talk about this game. So you have the main area of the map, which is uh, Tsuki Castle, which is most likely, it seems to be at least from the confirmed things that like Charlie Intel have said that that's the castle map from like World at War or Vanguard or, you know, pick whatever variation you want. 
So we thought we were getting a multiplayer map of that, but it turns out that it's just part of the Resurgence map, which is fine with me. I don't care. I really like Castle, but the way that it played in Vanguard, at least, was pretty weird. Like, it was... It was overly campy in a way that it's never been in the past. And then you have like a residential area, you have a shipwreck, you have the beach club area. It's going to be really interesting seeing, oh, especially with the underground area as well, how the game plays and like how a resurgence map plays with the ability to swim. Because they're obviously building the swimming mechanic into the routes on the map. The good thing about playing Shoot House right now is the fact that I know to back out every other time I get it for free for all. So, yeah, this is a great learning experience. See, like, what the f No, we're not. No. Nope. 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 My question is, are the quality of life changes that are coming to Warzone 2 going to make the game have more longevity? Because there's obviously a player decline. Um, I don't trust like all the people that are like impression farming just posting like steam charts I get that people are saying like it's a trend, right? So less people are playing it. I mean hell I've even been watching my friend Curtis play Dark Souls 3 and he's not even a souls guy It's because he played Elden Ring and he wanted to sort of revive that and I think he said he's even gonna play Elden Ring again Shit, dude. I saw Iceman Isaac playing Elden Ring He's like, a, I've never seen him. I mean, I don't watch him, but I've never seen or heard of him playing anything but Warzone. If the game is in a state where people like that are playing games like Elden Ring, that's pretty insane. I mean, that's a very, very clear loss of interest in the game. Oh no, I want to assassinate him. <laughs> I keep forgetting I have a UAV. It's pretty useful, I guess. Oh my god, what the? In the corner. Whoa, what the hell? I'm kind of going crazy right now. Oh my god. Wait, he killed me with a shotgun? He killed me with a slug? Oh my god. I almost had a blackbird. So yeah, assuming that the map will play well and people actually enjoy uh, the quality of life changes, I think uh, Warzone's going to be in a pretty good state. My concern is the fact that like there's no multiplayer content. There's like no multiplayer news even. It's like, come on, man. How is how is a game like this being neglected on a multiplayer scale? The thing that I'm really thinking about more than anything is the fact that so many people have talked about the fact that the game is just boring. Like the base game is boring. If you don't like the base game, I mean, there's a really good chance that you're not really gonna enjoy anything that they add to the game the game at its core is probably not going to change alongside what i just said about not enjoying the base game there are a lot of players that ever since the mw2 release they're just inhaling copium over and over and over again like oh yeah when season one launches when season one reloaded launches when season two drops when resurgence drops like you just got to find a different game to play for now you know i don't want to tell anybody how to live their life or like how to be happy or anything like that but if you're constantly like chasing that dragon of the next update you're never actually going to have fun with the game <laughs> i mean there's always going to be something that that isn't good enough but i digress though again i don't want to tell anybody how to live their life i'm not some therapist or anything like that i haven't been playing like any call of duty at all lately because I, whenever i get off work curtis is playing dark souls 3 and if you ever played a souls game and then you finally get one of your friends to play a souls game you know how good it feels to watch somebody experience those games for the first time and dark souls 3 being the monument that it is in the souls community it's so fun watching my best friend go through that game and figure out like how to defeat each boss and just just like find a build that he enjoys and just go through the trials and tribulations of that game because it really is a masterpiece and he i think he's only got like two bosses left he's got the very last dlc boss gale who's just i mean that fight's magical it's one of the best fights and that from soft has ever created 
and then the uh, Soul of Cinder. So I bought the Dead Space remake, but I told myself I wouldn't play it until I finished God of War. But, you know, you got you to gotta make some exceptions sometimes. I haven't started it, but I'll probably play it on stream tonight. So I might be playing it right now if you're seeing this the day that I upload. Come by anytime. Probably like after 7 p.m. Pacific time. That's when I'm normally streaming. God of War is really great. I think I'm like late game into it right now. I just got the spoilers, by the way. Spoilers. Spoilers for God of War Ragnarok. Spoilers. Spoilers. Okay, you had your chance. Uh, I just got the drop near spear, which is really cool. It's like from this this ring called the drop near ring, or I think it's actually just called drop near, but it, it is a ring. And I was very curious about it because I, I love history. So I looked it up and drop near was crafted by Brock and Sindri. The, except Sindri's name is different in the actual lore. It's like Eitri e or something like that. But Regardless, according to the lore, and I think I'm getting this right, Loki tricked Brock and Sindri into crafting Dropnir because he told them that they weren't as good as Smiths as Evaldi's sons, or Evaldi maybe, just personally. So they crafted Dropnir, and it's like on the ninth night, every ninth day, the ring multiplies into like eight different copies. The nickname for the ring is also the Dripper, which just makes me think of like like Goku Drip. So the idea is that the Lady of the Forge crafted the ring with that spearhead and then the blood of Kratos, or just the blood of a god, in order to create like a, an all forever duplicating spear, I guess. I just love how a game like that takes legitimate lore and crafts it into the game. And then people like me are curious about it. And we could just be like, oh, what's drop near? And then you can actually go and read about the, the real Norse mythology that is actually in writing. I went to the farmer's market with my girlfriend on Sunday. And I specifically went because I walked through there like passively uh maybe like two months ago and it's really cool because it's year round and like every single sunday and the hot sauce really caught my eye when i was walking through there last time so i specifically went with the intent to buy hot sauce from one of these vendors because i i like all different kinds of hot sauces especially the real flavorful ones so i ended up getting like six i bought three from one vendor and three from another and there's like cranberry ghost pepper uh there's like a habanero type one like uh, a tomatillo one and then oh a barbecue one too it's like real spicy barbecue i guess it won a hot sauce competition i should actually go grab them and just show them to you all right screw this i'm going to grab the hot sauce dude yami is so cute look at him up there look at him oh my god he's a little bundle here's the first one it's haxon elements or hoxon hoxan Something like that. I got two of the pumpkin habanero ones. Doesn't really taste like pumpkin. It's, but it's good. It's good. And then I got cranberry ghost. This one has a lot of sweetness to it. It's their hottest one and it's made with ghost peppers, ghost chilies. But yeah, it has like this really nice sweet heat palette to it. And then this one won an award from uh, the Good Food Awards in uh, 2022, the Tomatillo uh, Poblano pretty good it's a very like basic but hot and flavorful verde sauce and then these three right here are from this girl called uh hot babe hot sauce she focuses a lot on like caribbean heat like those so sort of like gulf heat flavors so there's this one right here she said this is her favorite it's the trini hot it's like trinidad hot and this one's like her all-around sauce i guess i've had it on eggs i had it on chicken and oh, I even put it on a little bit of pasta the other night. It was pretty good. And then this one here is like a mustard pepper sauce. If you like the taste of mustard, I think you'd probably like the taste of this one. Again, they all have like a good amount of heat to them. Some obviously hotter than others. And then this one right here is the one that won an award as well. It's called Chillin' and Grillin'. This is her hottest sauce and it's basically barbecue. It's cool because she gives you like this paper here that tells you a description of each sauce, the inspiration behind it, the peppers that they used, and what they generally pair it with or use it with. All of hers are made in Tumwater, Washington, and then Haxons are made in Seattle. I'll actually link both of their websites down below if anybody just wants to try different hot sauces and enjoys like different flavors and supporting smaller businesses, then 
feel free. That's why farmer's markets are so cool, dude. I mean, we got some custom pasta sauce while we were there too, and custom made raviolis. I got some handmade tortillas. Dude, that stuff is the shit. Like, and if you could support people like that, like that goes miles than supporting a giant corporation like Kroger or, you know, pick your, you know, giant ass grocery chain. I understand it's not the most convenient thing in the world and it's obviously a little bit more pricey, but if you have the ability is what I'm saying. And if you go out of your way a little bit to like support these people directly, I think it really does go a long way. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good day, good week, and uh, be nice to people. All right. Nicer than necessary. And I'll see you on the next one.